Hi, Gork. How it going? Oh, well, great. I just invented fire. Fire? Yeah. How it work? Well, I show you. Got a match? Yeah. <laughs> door-to-door salesman? Uh-huh. Oh, that's really yeah. something. Yeah? Uh-huh. You sold three doors yesterday? Uh-huh. Yeah? Uh-huh. To Monty Hall? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Listen, let me see what you've learned, okay? Okay. okay. Guaranteed to pick up everything. Yeah? One sweep does it all. Uh-huh. uh-huh. What the says, eggshells and garbage. Uh-huh. Right off the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The only thing that has a bigger vacuum is my head. Uh-huh. Now, wait a minute now. Just a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what? You going to sell me to try and sell you? <laughs> yeah. You're having a special uh, today, yeah? yeah? <laughs> On sale price for just $49.95. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. What was it before? Uh-huh. $8.95. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, is it any good? No, I'm not kidding, is it? Right, I, mean, I, I might buy it. Just let me see a little demonstration. Okay, all right. Just a All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay, all right. Okay. That's right. It's an ordinary kitchen garbage. Yeah, that's a little. Uh-huh. Now, that's going to pick up all that? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Just turn it right on there. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> What are you doing now? Looking for a new apartment. What's the matter? Well, You don't like living in a pig pen. <laughs> Let's find out what the weather's going to be today. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so the next time you need a refreshing lift, try Ever Ready Tea in the revolutionary new tea bag that contains its own little flashlight. That's right, there's a little tiny flashlight in each and every tea bag. So drink Ever Ready Tea, and if it doesn't hit the spot, at least you know it's down there looking for it. <laughs> Coming up on the news, you'll hear an eyewitness account of how Japan's Sony Corporation lost millions by putting out a TV set 
that fits into one of your cavities and has to be watched through a dental mirror. <laughs> Believe it or don't, Larry Siegel of Beverly Hills, California, astonishingly trained 500 dogs to form the words Frankie Avalon. <laughs> it was only when he tried to regroup them to spell Annette Funicello that he was savagely bitten to death. <laughs> And if you're one of the first 50 people to call in right now, you'll win a colorful sofa cushion commemorating the Johnstown flood, a five-gallon jug of peanut oil for squeaky elephants, and a box of monogrammed tongue depressors made out of petrified artichoke hearts. And now, here is today's weather. There will be severe mudslides by late this afternoon, so before you go out, check with your mutter. <laughs> you know, you can uh, learn an awful lot from the newspaper, and even more if you look at it. <laughs> so it's time for us to look at the newspaper, right, gang? Oh, here we go. Oh, here's a section I like. Facts at your fingertips. If you drop a piece of silverware, yeah, it means company's coming. And if you're missing a piece of silverware, it means company's already gone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, here's one. If you have an accident in the kitchen while making a sandwich, always use a frozen Band-Aid for cold cuts. <laughs> Look at this. Whereas most dogs have fleas, very few fleas have dogs. <laughs> you hear about this dog that went to circus and uh, flea circus and took the leading lady home? <laughs> I guess you didn't hear about that. <laughs> I'll have to tell you one of these days. Oh, here it is. Uh, facts. All right. Today is the 98th birthday of Pierre Garbage, inventor of the bag bearing his name. <laughs> 11 years ago today, Iowa farmer Orville Ludlow plays an organ in his cornfield, claims it was music to his ears. <laughs> <laughs> on this day, on this day, five years ago today, New York City Siamese twins file for trial separation. <laughs> and on this day, just one short year ago today, the sale of liquor was banned on all military installations. Remember, no one likes to see the bases loaded. <laughs> oh, let's see what's on television tonight. That's the thing, right? That's it, like that. Oh, here's a look. Oh, oh. Tonight, Captain Boring. A uh, grown man in bunny suit teaches the kids how to count to three by banging his head against a wall four times. I better get on with this or they'll have me do the boomerang bit again. Okay. That's a bit we tried one day and never worked. Oh, oh, the 6 p.m. news. Newsman with rented hairpiece and smile mispronounces station call letters and is forced to read the rest of the news dressed as Phyllis Dillon. <laughs> Oh, medical center. Dr. Joe tries to remove a man's bank account by open wallet surgery. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess that's about it. Yes? Okay, listen to me. Tell me something. Yeah. When you were born, did your nurse drop you on your head? Well, what kind of talk is that? I come from a poor family. I didn't have any nurse. My mother had to do it. <laughs> well, well, I just made up a little poem. Would you like to hear it? Not particular. Yes, I would love it. I, uh, I would love it. About your dogs, get rid of those, because if there's any more trouble, I'm going to punch your nose. Yes. Now, 
Dogs and cats, they don't agree. Yeah. Keep your dogs away or you'll get a knuckle sandwich free. Yeah. Yes. Now keep those dogs in this house. Yeah. I don't want them near my cat. Just yesterday, I caught that white thing. That's white fang. Fang to you, think to me. Yeah. He was feeding my cat. Well, that's very nice for a doggy to do that. No, it's a bad doggy. He was feeding her to a bear in a zoo. Oh. <laughs> now, I've had her trained as a killer cat. <laughs> steady, girl. Steady, steady. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I'm going to sick her right on those dogs. Are you kidding? My dogs eat more than that cat every afternoon at the happy hour club down the corner. And that club's so tough, the hat check girl's name is Guido. Guido's my sister. And she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Yeah. Now, I'm here. You call them dogs here, and let's see how they are against You have a hangnail. Mm. Thanks. I needed that. Yes. No, wait a minute. Yes. I want to see how they are against something that knows how to take care of itself. Well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I don't need to waste my dog's time on any 18-cent cat like that. Oh, yeah? All I got to do is get Boris and Morris. All right, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. ahead. Just don't go away. I ain't going any place. Get over there. Are oh, you kidding? Oh. Boris and Morris. Oh, they're ready. They're ready. <laughs> well, I'm Morris. ready. Come here, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> they're so mean, they're attacking each other. Oh, are you kidding? Here you go. Oh, are you kidding? No. All right. You ready? You ready? Okay. Okay, okay Boris. Morris, go get up. <laughs> That's a great. You guys are great. Any? Can I get you something to eat? Anything, but no more cheese, That's please. <laughs> In the next 30 minutes, you'll meet Tilford Isaacs, an electrician from Hammond, Indiana, who gives all his friends shorts for their birthdays. You'll meet Paul Devere of Huntington, West Virginia, who became a chain smoker when he found out he couldn't afford cigarettes. And you'll meet Harold Frankel, a farmer from Buckshot, Arkansas, who crossed a mouse with a cat and got a mouse that'll catch itself. Because you demanded it. And now, here is your host, genial, laughing, smiling Jack Tellman. Oh, yes. Well, as you can plainly see, this is the original naval destroyer. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, because it has a nail in it. Well, hello out there. Let me tell you, you're in for it tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Starting tonight, You Demanded It takes on an international flavor. Our producer's going out with a Chinese girl. <laughs> well, because You Demanded It is a special type show, no assignment is too difficult for us. Now, as I... <laughs> As I was saying, on you demand... Uh, Usher, would you please take care of the baby? <laughs> Thank you. As I was saying, uh, on you demanded it... Uh, who was that? Your son! Oh, thank goodness, I thought it was the sponsor. Well, as I was saying, on you demanded it, no assignment is too difficult for us. There isn't any place we wouldn't go for you. Yeah, why don't you go to... <laughs> oh, well, okay. All right, moving right along. Uh, tonight, we have a show, confound you. 
Oh, I mean, I'm reading that wrong. I mean, we have a show tonight that will confound you. <laughs> and it's all brought to you by the makers of Yippee Peanut Butter. Yes, sir. It's the original peanut butter with neon. One bite and your face lights up. <laughs> Yippee now contains vitamins. One bite of Yippee, and it gives you enough energy to throw the rest of the jar away. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yippee is the only peanut butter made with used peanuts. So remember, for that Yippee feeling, bite into a Yippee sandwich, wash it down with a fifth of gin, and you'll yell, Yippee! And now, on with the show. We have a letter here tonight. Our first request comes from Lancaster, Ohio, from a Colonel Darrell B. Mordecum, who writes, Dear Jack, colored greens and black-eyed peas cover the spuds I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Dear Jack, last year at the local carnival, I saw a most unusual motorcycle act, Milano, the death-defying cyclist. He drove his motorcycle off a hundred-foot platform where he opened a parachute and glided safely to Earth. Is he still alive? If he is, I demand to see it again. Well, I can tell you, Colonel Mordecum, you can bet your cotton-picking, sow-bellied, tasting mint julep he's still alive because you demanded it. We had our producer locate him, and he's with us tonight. And here he is from Venice, Italy, Milano, the death-defying cyclist. Bravo! <laughs> Because Milano speaks only Italian, our producer has arranged for an interpreter. Milano, it's a pleasure to have you on our show, and may I say, welcome to the United States once again. Tanto piacere. Benvenuti tutti a questo magnifico spettacolo televisione. Sono Milano, la prima motore biciclista in mondo. And now the translation. Badu roh al bait abu. Badu lah mishwi. Badu shwai roz. Badu labin. Would you please tell Milano that it is my pleasure to have him on the You Demanded It show. Badu roh al bait al bait abu hider. Deb Sherani, El Bait El Cassis. Well, why doesn't he say something? Marmar Zamani, Zamani Marmar, Baruf. Can I help you, Mr. Talman? Yes, uh, this man here refuses to interpret my message to Milano. Why should he? Well, isn't he Milano's interpreter? No, he's Milano's brother. <laughs> But they speak different languages. Well, that's because they went to different schools together. <laughs> oh, well, that explains it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, there's one thing that's puzzling me. What's that? Well, who are you? I'm their father. <laughs> well, would you please tell Milano that we would like him to perform for us? Why, certainly. <laughs> uh, what did he say? He says he wants me to quit whispering in his ear. <laughs> We've got to have some way to communicate to Milano uh, what we want him to do. Uh, we want you, Milano, to get on the motorcycle and get, and you will go over, and when you leap off the cliff, the parachute will open, and you will float down to earth gently like a feather. Do you understand? Hey, baby, why didn't you say that in the first place? Anything you want, big mama. Come on, daddy, let's get this show on the road. Woo! <laughs> Milano is now taking up his position. Ruh al bait, al bait al Ruh al bait, hand there. We're taking.
checking our cameras. He would take it, Karukoi, but Ruh Hatsepshi. Would you get out of here? Ready, I'll go by the As I was saying, Milano is taking up his position. He's on his motorcycles, and our cameras are trained on him, and he is waiting for the signal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, Milano, when he gets the signal, will start his motorcycle, and it will race 200 yards off the Pacific Cliffs. And as he goes over, he will release his parachute and glide safely 100 feet below. May I have the earphones, please? Thank you, Joseph. Yes, are you ready, Milano? Milano has signaled that he is ready. We will now switch our cameras uh, to outdoors and we will pick up Milano. Here is Milano because you demanded it. The family of Milano requests that in lieu of flowers, would you please send them wine? <laughs> Thanks again for being with us. We'll see you again next week when Evil Knievel will attempt to jump six landlords with a tractor. Until then, have a wonderful week, and we will see you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? We're having a little argument. <laughs> <laughs> a little argument about what? Go on. Tell him, Tyrone. I'll tell him when I'm good and ready you and will. I'm that ready. You will. Yeah. No, take oh, oh, wait, just oh, Settle it. I'll settle it. <laughs> Just a minute. You tell me. Okay, this is a stick up. Give us all your money. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Give us all your money. What? Look at that. What? Look at that. Are you this measly? But. Uh, uh, why did you put up such a fight for a lousy 25 cents? Well, I thought you were after the $200 I had hidden in my shoe. What? Yeah!